Hello, everybody. Uh, we are so glad everybody's participating in the 25th anniversary of the, the Oil and Gas Conference. I have the uh, privilege and honor of introducing Mark Slaughter, and he is uh, the CEO of INET. INET provides broadband to a lot of the fields out there, and uh, let's hear a good one for Mark. Stu, thanks very much. Uh, Infrastructure Networks is pleased to present today at the Intercom Conference for the, uh, covering the future of oil field connectivity. And while you might think I'm on a beach in Hawaii, I'm actually in my home office in Houston. So just pleased to be here. I'm Mark Slaughter, uh, the Chief Executive Officer, as Stu said. Uh, so one of the things I'm going to set up here is the digital oil field stack. And the reason I'm going to set this up for you, it provides a framework to talk about our business and providing oil field connectivity. I'll also come back at the back end and bring up this framework again with some partner companies that we work with. So the, the digital oil field stack can be thought of as, as connectivity at the foundational layer. That's the connectivity from the well or drilling rig or processing facility back to civilization to the office. Next level up are devices. These are physical devices such as sensors and actuators at the rig site that can include data storage and edge computing. And these are devices that are gathering and computing some of the data. That is then transmitted via the connectivity layer to the platform layer. The platform layer is cloud infrastructure. We know about Microsoft Azure and AWS and others that, that grab and store this data in the cloud. Advanced analytics are then performed on that data to turn it into useful information. And the visualization layer is presenting that information in, in decision-making formats for decision makers back in the office to, to provide their, their insights. Uh, so that's the digital oil field stack. And we recently mark it red at the bottom is we play as the foundational layer, as the connectivity layer, because none of the rest of this happens unless you have great, reliable, robust connectivity that reaches out uh, to these remote locations. So a little bit of history of oil field communications. And unfortunately, I'm probably old enough that I've been around for most of this and I've, I've seen these transitions. It's been fairly fascinating. But in, in the time that I was starting my career uh, with Halliburton, you didn't have the satellite and certainly the terrestrial wireless connectivity or even the fiber to, to the well pad uh, uh, situations that you have today. You had simple voice services. And in fact, those voice services for the most part did not reach out to the well pad or the drilling rig. The company man or the tool pusher to make their report would have to drive into town to, to a payphone booth and call it in. That was it. And then finally, uh, in, in the 2000s, you began to see satellite appearing uh, first of, you know, for uh, data, not for voice. Voice, in many cases, was analog, was delivered by a phone cable rolled out from a you know, southwestern bell head end a couple of miles out to the location. And satellite came in to offer a data connection for the first time. So you could do email and maybe uh, uh, surf the Internet a bit, but very limited uh, and supported by 3G. Finally, in the 2010 plus time frame, we've moved into 4G. And 4G is, it also was the time that, uh, that my company, Infrastructure Networks or INET, came into being uh, with a 4G network serving the oil and gas industry. So a much bigger pipe, higher throughput for data, uh, better quality voice, and uh, it was really bringing terrestrial wireless uh, to the field. And it began supplanting satellite because of the low latency and the higher throughput and bandwidth capabilities that were offered. Um, we also, in our company, INET, uh, through an investment through one of our investors, Apollo Global Management, we have upgraded the network to be 5G capable. I'm gonna spend some time a little later here talking about that, but that's enabling a true digital transformation of field operations, an even larger pipe, faster than 4G, even better quality voice, but also enabling not just ultra broadband speeds, but also narrow band IoT that I'll talk about. So what are the current challenges to field connectivity? You know, we like to think the oil and gas industry is, is quite advanced, which it is, but it's not when it really comes to realizing the true benefits from the digital oil field. You know, you have geographic uh, uh, issues and challenges, sites are remote and distributed. Uh, they tend to be in harsh environments with limited physical access. Uh, commercially, 
Uh, there's little standardization across many of these technologies and kind of an opaque cost of uh, total cost of ownership across the life of, of these network investments, at least from the end user standpoint. And then technically, there's a lot of very specialized expertise that's needed to maintain these networks and provide these services at the edge. So it creates a, a number of challenges and we think our company is you know, well positioned to address and overcome each of those. So a question for the audience is, how much data a month in today's environment do you think transits a rig site? You know, is it, is it, a, is it a megabyte? you know, a gigabyte, you know, how, how much is it? Well, it turns out in the Permian, we've, we've run this analysis. Um, we are delivering either off the rig or onto the rig, almost a terabyte of data per rig per month. So if you, it's 842 gigabytes per rig on average. And so if you added that, uh, this, this was done back when the rig count was a little higher than it is today in the Permian, but it was about 346 terabytes of information that is moving in and off of a drilling operation across the Permian Basin. So there have been some that have said, you know, the oil and gas business is not really about oil today, it's about data and information. And the Houston Chronicle had said earlier this year that, you know, the, the bandwidth needs are, may become the next bottleneck in the Permian. And that's where we think we are the answer to that bottleneck. Uh, in terms of how the data is used, you can see most of it is enterprise connectivity, about two thirds. That includes uh, casual internet or the crew Wi-Fi services that are in there, but also the enterprise level connectivity. We also provide separate carriers to the company man and the tool pusher. Um, and you know, throughout there are voice services because no matter where you are, people want to be able to speak uh, to the field offices and the headquarters. So if you were generating a terabyte of data from a rig over the course of a month, how do you handle that when basic connectivity is a problem? Uh, the answer is, is to create a seamless pad wide broadband connectivity solution. So it's connectivity to mobile devices through Wi-Fi and small cell deployment. Those are called Pico cells or Fento cells. And across the pad, you provide consistent communications to the company man trailer, the tool pusher trailer, the drill rig floor, uh, all the other service companies that are resident out there. You provide a local area network that connects everybody and then very reliable backhaul across our private licensed 4G, 5G network. We think in doing so, we can serve the operator, the driller, the service companies, even uh, VIP visitors out there, providing them the connectivity they need to conduct their business. And so we consolidate and lower remote communication spends compared to oil and gas operators who might feel compelled to build their own networks. And we'll come back and quantify that here in a bit. So in delivering seamless field connectivity, we believe we enable a digital transformation of field operations, cost-effective data acquisition that can be scaled and priced uh, to be able to be uh, a, a proper answer for the, even the lowest producing assets all the way down to a stripper well. We can consolidate and reduce that communication spend and we allow the implementation of new technologies and are able to scale that across our 130,000 square mile network lowering the risk of adoption of new solutions that oil and gas operators or oil field services companies may want to bring to bear in the digital oil field. So how do you reach a remote site like a rig or a, a well pad or, or storage or processing facility? You can do it by satellite. You can connect to the consumer wireless networks uh, that tend to work better if you're along a highway or in a major city, but not in the middle, say, of the Permian or the Bakken but uh, they are there, that's AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Uh, if you're an operator, you can build your own network, or you can tap into INET's private licensed 4G, 5, 5G LTE network that's backhauled by microwave and fiber. And we have listed several considerations here, the bandwidth speeds uh, for the C-suite that may be listening, the total cost of ownership, the CapEx and OpEx that you would have to spend yourself if you uh, built and operated a customer-owned network compared to ours, the latency, uh, service level agreement, um, compatibility with SCADA, all these factors we've kind of listed left to right, and we believe that, that we rank superior to most other alternatives that uh, operators would have in terms of connecting their remote and distributed operations back to the office. So let's talk a little bit about 5G. Everybody thinks about 5G as high speed, 
higher than 4G. And that is true. That's one half of the story. It delivers gigabit speeds. And that's going to enable all sorts of real time and other specialized applications that are bandwidth hogs to be used at the edge. And you can see the differences in speed, even the differences in latency. Latency is the delay uh, in mil measured in milliseconds uh, for the transit of, of the uh, application and the performance of that application. So the applications run better the lower the latency. That's why uh, any 4G or 5G beats satellite every day because of the latency of going up and down 22,500 miles to a geosynchronous satellite. So the terrestrial wireless always wins. So in this case, 5G, we're going to be able to deliver at a well pad uh, gigabit speeds that support integrated operations. And we believe it's a real game changer. And we can do this seamlessly across any you know, well pad uh, and, and, uh, and storage facility or, or drilling rig uh, within our coverage area in four basins. But the other half is also interesting and is not as well known. And it's the 5G for industrial efficiency. It's narrowband IoT. Uh, there are now low power, low cost radio devices that can be deployed all the way down to a sensor or actuator level, and they can be massively scaled uh, basin wide. And we can, using the 5G uh, standards, we can deliver that back to uh, operators in their field offices or home offices to allow them to remotely monitor and engage in direct activities at the edge uh, using uh, the other the narrowband IoT uh, services. So this is the other side that's not as well known. Everybody thinks of, of 5G as being massive speeds, but it's also going to really bring machine to machine uh, automation, uh, predictive analytics and other things to bear in ways that hasn't happened before. And will really take, we think, oil field operations remote, remotely managed to, to a new level. So if you bring it all together, uh, INET's 4G, 5G capable network is gonna have three manifestations to it. <clears throat> it will still have the private 4G broadband connectivity that we have today that will allow you to, to manage producing assets and SCADA networks over large geographic areas. But at a local level, within a say a mile, a half mile to a mile radius, we'll be able to deliver ultra broadband gigabit speeds on a local basis through small cell that is backhauled across our network. But also across the basin, we can deliver a private 5G narrowband that can be scaled literally across millions of sensor devices. <clears throat> so we think altogether, this ends up being a network that is not only serving the needs of the oil industry today, but also tomorrow. It's a future-proof network that takes the industry you know, through a digital transformation of its field operations. So I wanna mention a couple of uh, case studies here um, in, in terms of how this network has helped companies save money or solve real problems at the edge. We, we had a customer that is now a major customer of ours today who has almost every remote site with us. <clears throat> when we first uh, talked to them, they had multiple providers. Um, they had inconsistent communications, not very reliable, and they had little uh, view as to the transparency of those communications costs. So we standardized the delivery, gave them one uh, throat to choke, so to speak, by allowing them to use just us as a single provider using a single network. And we re re removed the need for the company man to select providers. We worked with the IT department and we were able to be transparent around the communications costs. They had gotten to the point that they were even contemplating you know, building their own networks. And we were able to convince them that the present value of the invoices we might issue over the life of a relationship with us was millions of dollars cheaper than building and operating their own network. Uh, we, the fact that we can scale across multiple customers um, and, and have a much wider geography and, and we're specialists in our field allows us to deliver a value proposition that's very, very, very unique. And in this case, as we said, savings over one million a year compared to them running their own network as a response. And they've been able to focus on the application layer, looking at the applications and solutions they can bring to bear for their drilling and production operations uh, to improve their business. The second one is a partner we have. In fact, uh, I'm on the board of directors of that company. It's called Osperity. And Osperity is an intelligent visual monitoring company backed by Shell Ventures. Uh, what it does is with cameras at the edge at a, at a well pad or a drilling site, um, the cameras use a form of artificial intelligence called computer vision to remotely monitor uh, field operations. 
not just physical security, but you can look at uh, you know vehicle traffic. You can geofence certain areas and make sure that workers are wearing uh, proper PPE, a hard hat, um, or that uh, that uh, you know if animals come on location, just all sorts of things. It's a rules-based service that sends alerts both out to the out to the edge, but also to the office. And then you know the oil and gas company can manage by exception. Uh, Shell got excited about this service. Uh, because of the fact that they were able to cut their truck rolls to the, to the locations by as much as 50%, you know, which saved money, improved productivity. They were able to reduce their labor force, and it was a positive for the environment. So it checked just about every box, and they became enthusiastic investors in that company. INED is their exclusive communications partner in the lower 48, uh, providing them the, with the reliable and robust connectivity that brings their intelligent visual monitoring solution to life. And we, we work with lots of partners like Osperity. Another one is out in California, uh, several thousand low producing wells, uh, stripper and above, um, that were served by obsolete, disparate communication systems. Lots of repairs, lots of problems. The networks didn't relate very well, uh, but the operator was reluctant to, to do a you know, massive uh, you know, upgrade to the system. Uh, but there were environmental risks associated with it, uh, uh, unscheduled shut-ins, just in, in no visibility to the true operating costs. So we came in with a proposed solution to manage those existing communication, communications, but with our network and our overlay and uh, replacing on a scheduled basis their field equipment with lower cost, narrow band IoT solutions. And in doing so, you know, we, we freed the operator to really focus their energies on higher producing assets in the unconventional area and, and gave them a path uh, you know, for, for them to improve their field monitoring capabilities over time and their data analytics solutions. So we came, really came in and took a burden off their shoulders. So uh, I mentioned before, we are uh, pursuing 5G uh, ultra broadband and 5G narrowband pilots in the Permian Basin. So ultra broadband is small cell millimeter wave access technologies at the well pad that backhauls across our network. We deliver gigabit speeds for bandwidth intensive applications. It's applicable to uh, drilling uh, rig sites, um, completions, producing wells, and even processing and storage facilities. So across the upstream space, uh, we believe this ultra broadband service on a local basis can be quite valuable to the industry. And as I mentioned before, narrowband uh, basin wide coverage using our low power, low cost radios for sensors and to, to enable industrial applications. <coughs> Mentioning this and, you know, and telling this to the market that we were pursuing 5G pilots, we ended up getting a lot of press coverage as you can see here. So we believe we bridge the gap between consumer wireless and operator owned networks. If, if you don't use our network uh, and you don't use satellite, which is uh, disadvantaged because of the, the high latency associated with that service, then you're left with consumer wireless, which as I mentioned is really good along the highways and around the major cities, but is not consistently available deep in these uh, basins. Um, and then the other possibility is an, an oil and gas company building its own network if they're not happy with the consumer networks. Well, we've shown that we can save the, the typical operator millions of dollars by using our network rather than building their own. That's what we're a spe specialist at. It frees up the oil and gas company you know, to focus on what it does best, which is drilling and producing oil and gas uh, efficiently and safely. So we give a zero capital solution for oil and gas operators, reduce their operating expense. We use a private licensed uh, 700 megahertz spectrum network. It's rapidly deployable and it uses the LTE global standard, both 4G today and 5G capable. And so we believe, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it is the answer. It fits right in the middle between consumer wireless and operator owned networks and is the answer as we move forward. So we are a leading provider of critical you know, wireless infrastructure solutions. Uh, we not only um, you know, run a network, we also have support staff that provision and support that service. We have a network operations center in Houston that proactively monitors the network and dispatches technicians as needed. Uh, we provide industry-wide support uh, for the oil and gas industry to enable all sorts of applications associated with drilling completions and production. We're from this industry. We know not just what we do in terms of telecommunications, but we also come from the oil field services industry. 
and so you know we we know what you do. We know the the, the rigorous and you know rigorous demands of, of the industry. Uh, we have partners when we get into the uh, IIoT digital technology providers that we can bring to bear to to bring true solutions to you. And you know over the course of really the past couple of years, we've expanded and upgraded. Uh, the technology and the capacity of that network such that today we cover 130,000 square miles. It's roughly the size of Japan or the state of California inside the continental United States. And we aimed it at four basins of high activity with topography appropriate for our service. So it's the Permian Basin in, in uh, West Texas and Southeast New Mexico, the Bakken in North Dakota, the Eagleford in South Texas, and the Scoop Stack in Oklahoma. I should mention that we're backed by two investors. Altera Group, uh, based in Denver, uh, that is a venture capital firm, an early stage private equity investor focused at the intersection of, of technology and energy uh, and services. So we fit that one uh, very well for them. And then Apollo Global Management, one of the world's largest private equity firms that was seeking an earlier stage technology based company in, in oil field services. And that, that is our company as well. So those two companies are teamed together to support us. And we're delighted to have them in the investment syndicate. So here's a little bit of a look at our coverage uh, in each of these four basins that you can see there. Um, if you want to know some of the specifics, it's a Nokia platform. No, it's not Huawei. <laughs> it's uh, to get to some of the things with China. No, it's Nokia Airscale uh, with Wavens microwave uh, for backhaul along with fiber. And it's built specifically for demanding oil and gas operations. So we, we deliver quality of service, meaning that we can prioritize different levels of traffic to provide VIP uh, uh, priority to certain mission critical traffic for you, some, some real time data. And uh, it makes the overall network perform better. Uh, that's compared to these consumer you know, public carrier networks that are just best efforts in one big pipe and good luck. Uh, and our pricing is based on throughput, not consumption. Uh, a lot of the public carriers base it on how much you send through the pipe, not the size of the pipe. We, we like to price based on throughput. You can put as much or as little data as you want through there. We, we define the pipe for you. Uh, our brag page for customers, uh, you know, we serve oil and gas operators, both majors as well as progressive independents. Uh, the major uh, drilling contractors oil field services companies and midstream pipeline operators. So a, a nice who's who of companies that are active in the lower 48 in these unconventional uh, shale basins. Now back to this digital technology stack, another important point, you see INET playing you know, solely at this connectivity layer, the foundational enabler of the industrial internet as is, is applied to the oil and gas business. But at the devices platform, advanced analytics and visualization layer, you see a number of companies that we team with uh, to provide you know, comprehensive solutions that, that help you manage more productively, more efficiently, and more safely in the drilling you know, completions and productions arena. Uh, here's our management team, all based in, in Houston. Um, in fact, we do have a co-founder of the business, number two person there, Stan Huey, uh, still is in the business as our chief technology officer and technology strategist. He's the one who co-conceived of this business, and I'm just delighted you know, to be at the helm today and, and guiding it forward as it goes through its next stages. Uh, we've got a good team of, uh, of of oil and gas and oil field services people who are now telecommunications experts. So we, we know your business and we know the, the role of remote communications in helping make that happen. So again, INET, infrastructure networks, uh, you know, we enable digital solutions. We allow you to go through a digital transformation of your field operations. Thanks so much to Inter Intercom for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Uh are at the same beach uh, today that you recorded your presentation on. So uh, good to see you this morning. Uh, Dan Genovese, Director of uh, 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 Consulting here at Intercom. And we have about uh, 10, uh, 15 minutes for uh, Q&A. Uh, and I wanna start off with a question. What was the driving force behind forming this company? Uh, and can you share a little bit of history about that with us? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, Infrastructure Networks was actually formed in 2011, uh, so a relatively new company in the world of, of, of startups, uh, but with a vision of bringing uh, latest generation terrestrial wireless to the oil patch. 
And so the company you know, set up originally in the Permian and uh, provided this private multi-access network uh, aimed specifically at the oil and gas industry. Of course, as you saw in the presentation, it's now been built out to cover you know, four major shale basins across the continental United States. So yeah. I'm, not the, I'm not the founder, I'm the middle inning relief to use baseball parlance, but uh, it's been a lot of fun to get behind this company. Yeah, well, I'll mention that your, uh, I think your Astros beat the Rockies last night, so uh, I won't hold that against you. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quickly, you know, I just had, I just had a Capital Accelerator uh, panel and we, we did our Q&A this morning. Um, and so much of uh, that technology needs this type of communication because it's really integrating the oil field service. It's integrating uh, uh, the drill rig uh, with the home office. Um, it's a tough time for oil and gas, but how can remote communication help companies uh, in the oil field? Is it connecting that technology, that new technology? Yeah, it's really bringing operational technology innovation, information technology innovation to life. Oil and gas operators today really need to make things work. They need to deliver compensatory returns in a lower commodity price environment. So, so given that, uh, remote communications can play the role of allowing for a digital transformation of field operations. And so that means you can lower the break-even costs. That's one dimension. The second dimension is, is remote workers. A lot of us, because of COVID, are having to work out of a home office or are not able to travel you know, from the office to the field as readily uh, because of the exposures or, or travel restrictions. And given that, our technology also allows remote monitoring and even direction of activity you know, from the office out to the field. Uh, so in Europe, that's called integrated operations. Uh, but here, here in the US, I'm not sure we have a term specifically uh, maybe real time, but the idea is that you can be in the office now and, and oversee and direct activity. And that's going to be uh, not just important today, but important going forward to allow, you know, your skill sets back in the office to manage remote and distributed field operations from, from a single site. Yeah, you know, we, we had a couple of conversations already uh, regarding um, air quality monitoring uh, as it relates to ESG and method emissions, things like that. Uh, it, it, it would seem like uh, your technology would be very uh, uh, instrumental in, in enabling that technology so you get real time uh, information about uh, you know, methane leak along a pipeline or at a wellhead. Uh, is, is that what you're connecting uh, out there with, with your uh, uh, 4G and 5G? Yeah, ind indeed we can. Um, you know, we, we have certain partners we can bring to bear as well, or we can you know, tie in with, with operators and their particular solutions. But the idea is that we can help operators operate you know, more productively, more efficiently, more safely, and in an environmentally appropriate manner. So you know, that, that's true. We, we can look at emissions. We can have visual monitoring that can include thermal cameras that's monitoring equipment or other sorts of sensors that are looking for methane emissions, all of that uh, we can help deliver back to decision makers. And now uh, help me with this, the difference between 4G and 5G, you mentioned that INET uh, provides both. What's the difference uh, as it pertains to the oil field? Yeah, so 4G LTE is, is really delivering uh, several million uh, bytes per second or bits per second uh, to the edge, so it's an, it's it would be called broadband speeds, and that allows the you know the basic package of, of data, of voice, and and video services to the edge. That's very important. But you know with with certain you know app or data intensive applications, uh, we're going to need to go to higher speeds. And because of that, the the five G has two manifestations. One is is gigabit speed. So uh, from our network, we can deploy small cells with millimeter wave. Uh, spectrum and within about a half mile radius of a well site, a processing facility or drilling rig, we can deliver gigabit speeds, which is really going to unlock uh, the potential from data intensive applications. And so we can really take this to a new level. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that uh, in the 3G PP standards, there, there also is narrowband IoT, the idea that with low power radios deployed at the edge connected to sensors and actuators, we can literally scale 5G across millions of devices basin-wide. 
Um, that is really, really a game changer when you when you think about monitoring uh, remote uh, producing sites uh, distributed across the basin. So it, it, we like to think our network is is you know five G ultra broadband, four G broadband, and five G narrowband. That is really what we're able to deliver to customers today. Yeah, and the di the difference between digital technology and, and I've kind of mentioned them, and, and certainly uh, the conference has had. Uh, some exposure to some of these companies that are bringing uh, technology solutions to the oil field. Uh, you're focused primarily on remote connectivity. Uh, wh why not uh, uh, the technology solution itself? Well, in, in great part, we know what we know. And you know, our role is to provide that robust and reliable connectivity to the edge. That's our specialty. Um, but you know, we are great to work with partners who then take that connectivity and deliver digital technology solutions. You know, we may find you know, down the road that we move up the stack, so to speak, in, in what we deliver. But today, we think it's important to provide that reliable path and team with great companies that deliver those digital solutions for the oil and gas industry. Okay, and, and uh, uh, many of your customers have built or are planning to build their own networks uh, why are they doing that instead of utilizing your multi-axis private network? Well, many are using our, our network, uh, but some are building their own. Um, and I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One is, and the reason you know, we're so excited to be at this conference, is that we're not well known. Uh, I came on board uh, just about a year ago, and one of the things I've found fairly early on in speaking to customers is that we weren't well known out there. We were, as I, as I told the employee base, the the greatest kept secret in the oil patch. And so we've been trying to get the word out, improving our, our marketing and just having those uh, you know, senior level conversations you know, with oil and gas companies, drillers and service companies to let them know what we've built and what we have available. Uh, but that said, um, uh, you know, some companies do want to build their own networks. A lot of that is more production focused. Uh, there's a lot more uh, fiber deployment closer to the pad that's happening. And uh, the, the way we like to think about that is we, we can team with those efforts, uh, not only helping uh, operators uh, you know, design, build, construct, and operate those sorts of networks, but we can tie that into our multi-access private network as well and build a more robust solution. So, so we, and, and when we think about 5G at the edge, another aspect of this is we're going to need fiber closer to the pad because of the, the bandwidth that's being generated at the edge with 5G. We're going to need fiber anyway to be able to backhaul that appropriately back to the customer's office. And given that, uh, you know, teaming with our operator customers uh, with respect to any of the fiber networks that they are building deeper in these basins is going to be important to deliver those 5G solutions. Yeah, rumor has it that uh, you, you had a conversation with a uh, with an ENP that uh, uh, spent a lot of money uh, trying to build out their own network, only to discover you guys after the fact. Is is there any truth to that? And I won't name any names. <laughs> there there are a few of those. And okay. uh, you know, I, I had one uh, one customer who who told me that they wish they'd known before they'd spent that money. And and what what we found is, and what we can demonstrate very very clearly is that uh, using our network can literally save millions of dollars over the CapEx and present value of OpEx that a customer operator might spend itself in uh, constructing, owning, and servicing its own network. Because we get greater utilization. We, we built a network that's ubiquitous across these four basins, not just along the highways and major cities the way the public carriers have it, have it in. Uh, but we can literally uh, scale that single investment across multiple customers. And that's really the value proposition that we offer. Uh, they get the benefit of a private network, but not having to, to uh, spend the money themselves, uh, you know, building and maintaining that network. We do that for them as a specialist. And it frees, you know, oil and gas companies to focus on what they do best, which is drilling and producing oil and gas uh, safely in, envir in an environmentally friendly manner. Well, Mark, I, I appreciate you joining us here at the Oil and Gas Conference um, and really want to encourage people to reach out to you. Uh, if, if people haven't heard of you, hopefully uh, this is some great exposure for you. Uh, your last, uh, your slides will be up on the conference website uh, probably within half a day here. Uh, they can contact you, uh, get your contact information there. Uh, look up uh, Infrastructure Networks, INET. Mark, thank you very much. I hope you're successful and you send me an invitation to the beach you're sitting on. 
uh, to join you and, and we'll have a conversation. Unfortunately, it's a virtual background, but thank you. Yeah, we, we very much appreciate it. Thanks so much. You bet. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay,